So I've decided to make some videos of the vinyl and CDs that I own, basically my music collection. I decided to start with the classical music that I have. A lot of the music that I own, some of it came down to me from a long time ago that I've either bought or I had for a while. And some of it was gotten by crate digging. Others came about by I've inherited them or I've bought them or I've acquired them in some sort of way. So there's multiple feeds in here. I have different kinds of music, so I'll be making separate videos for jazz and Broadway, which I've recently been sort of collecting. And then I have some, you know, rock records and other things as well. So they'll be done in separate videos. I had a great record collection when I was in college and um, except for a very few of those records, I actually sold that collection. But anyway, some of these records are interesting. Um, a lot of them, like I said, I got crate digging. Others, uh, I inherited them from other people, especially the CDs, uh, which there's a really a lot of fine, fine classical music in the CD collection, which we'll get to after uh, we look at the vinyl here. But I decided for whatever reason to start with Mozart. And I've sort of kept the composers together, so they're not chronologically in order or anything like that. Anyway, so we've got Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart on the great Dutch gramophone label. Quintet for clarinet and strings, quintet for oboe and strings. Mozart's always great. Deutsch gramophone label was always a great label. You know it's going to be recorded very well. Uh, George Sell. Mozart, Four Sonatas uh, for piano and violin. Raphael Drurian, which I've never heard of, on the violin musician on the Columbia label. This was kind of an interesting record that I picked up one day. It's Mozart, Concerto for Clarinet and Orchestra, as well as the Clarinet Quintet, played by Benny Goodman, the great jazz or swing band leader. Charles Monk and the Boston Symphony Orchestra. So, um, you know, he, he was a great, great jazz and swing clarinetist, but he also made some forays into classical music, such as this Mozart album on the RCA Victor label, and a nice cover too. You know, records are really interesting things. Each of them have a special story behind them. You know, you could listen to a lot of this music on digitals places and sharing portals and things like that but the objects themselves tell a certain story all right let's go on to the next one uh we're still in sort of mozart so we've got frederica von stad which is a great vocalist and uh these these records on the phillips label they sound really beautiful rotterdam philharmonic orchestra Uh, not a very good picture, but we've got Mozart Concerto for two pianos and Concerto for three pianos. Uh, kind of funny how there's a bunch of different languages here. Vladimir Ashkenazi, Baron Boim, and Fu Tsong, which is a guy I never had heard of before, but it turns out that he's a, um, an accomplished uh, pianist from China. So we've got the fine vocalist Maria Kalas singing Beethoven, Mozart, excerpts from his operas Don Giovanni and The Marriage of Figaro, Weber. I have not heard this disc. By the way, I have not heard a lot of these discs. I forgot to mention. Um, a lot of these I just acquired. I wanted to listen to all the discs before I actually made videos about them. but. I realized I have too many of them and it would just take too long. If you actually know of some of these records and you have a recommendation of what I should listen to first or second, or any sort of comments about any of these records, just what you think, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'd like to hear your thoughts about them. As a matter of fact, regarding vocal music, I've got to say I've always been into orchestral music. I've always been into instrumental music, piano music, guitar music, violin music. But I never really paid attention to vocal music until recently 
when I started, you know, acquiring some vocal music. And I must say, I'm really enjoying it. So let's keep going. Mozart, The Last Sim Six Symphonies. Nice picture of Herbert von Karajan, which was a great conductor, and the Berlin Philharmonic. So these are, the, this is volume three. I don't have volume one or volume two. Um, number 40 and number 41, the, the Great Jupiter Symphony. We've got Arthur Rubinstein, the great pianist, playing Grieg's Piano Concerto. Uh, looks like there's some other stuff here. And favorite encores. I have not listened to this disc either. Uh, we've got Faya, Ritual Fire Dance, Liszt, Schumann Romance, Prokofiev March, and v Villa Lobos. So I really like most of that stuff. In its rare coincidence of sound, balance, and performance of conductor, orchestra, and soloist, this is the most perfect recording I have made. Arthur Rubinstein, so wow. That's saying a lot there. If this is true, he considers this here record, and this guy made a lot of records and was very famous, is the most perfect recording he has ever made. Huh, gotta listen to that just for that. Theirs is a really nice record too. Vladimir Horowitz, another great, great, great pianist who could just touch the piano and it sounded like something you wanted to listen to. Well, it says, it says, a recording of his first concert in 12 years. So, you know, Horowitz is, is a great instrumentalist, a great pianist, but for some reason did not play music for 12 years. He didn't give a concert in 12 years. And then he came back and he gave one at Carnegie Hall, I think it was kind of like a comeback concert for him. I don't know why he didn't give a concert in 12 years. Maybe somebody in the uh, comments could uh, enlighten me about this fact. Anyway, this is a nice, beautiful record. It's, it's a gatefold. It's got photographs of the concert on the inside. And it's got a terrific lineup of, of pieces. You could probably do a search and see what's on it. A recent acquisition. Brahms. Really like Brahms. Really, really like Brahms. And um, here's sort of an interesting combination of instrumentation. A horn trio. Usually you hear like a string trio and a clarinet trio. Opus 114. Christoph Eschenbach on the piano and these horn players. Grand Prix du Disque Paris. So this won some awards. It's on the Deutsche Grammophon label, so you know it probably sounds really good. Just a quick note about vinyl records and, and CDs. You know, as many of you who are music lovers and like to look at records and collect music, you know there's a big debate going on. Which is better, CDs or records? Some say that records, you know, since it's analog, you know, and it doesn't break the music up into digital samples, that it has a better sound and you hear a lot more of the high end and things like that. Uh, others say that depending on how it's recorded and depending on how well you can hear, first of all, that you're not gonna be able to hear a difference and that with CDs, you know, you're gonna have a pristine sound, you're not gonna have any pops, you're not gonna have any extraneous noise from dust getting in the grooves of the records and so on and so forth. My personal take on it, who cares? As a matter of fact, I actually kind of think it's a little bit silly to make records now uh, instead of making CDs or digital music. I think records belong to a certain time and place. There's a lot of records out there that you can get and you have to have something to play it on, so you play them on a turntable. Like I said, if I were going to buy music now, like recently recorded music, I wouldn't buy them on vinyl. I would buy them either on CD or, or digitally. But personally, I find that the old records are fun to have because they're like artifacts from a particular time. You could see what people were interested in recording. You could see the graphic design of the records. Uh, sometimes the wear of the records are interesting because they tell a story. They have a certain patina about them. 
By the way, so all of these records, while some of them may look worn, is pretty much in pristine condition. I mean, I don't bother getting things that are like all scratched up, but Brahms, um, lyrical composer and, and uh, you know, I got to him a little bit later after the Mozart, Bach and Beethoven. I think the first guy I ever was really into was Bach. And it took a while for me to just get around to Brahms. Actually, this is going to be like a little Bach section. Archive, um, archive production, History of Music Division of the Deutsche Grammophon Gesellschaft. Archive Productions is sort of a branch of Deutsch Grammophon, and they really were made quite good. The Germans, they really cared. I mean, it's about their music, I think, and about creating records. As a matter of fact, you can see right here, it's got like a little inspection sticker. Technical and performance. So what does that mean? That one guy inspected every single record? I mean, how could he do that? Sometimes if you buy a new suit or something, they got a little label in there with like an inspection. But I mean, you know, they're making thousands of records. It seems a little bit odd to me. Anyway, this is um, Bach, sort of starts the Bach portion of this video. And um, series L, Overtures and Symphonies, we've got Overture number two in B minor, BWV 1067, and Overture number three in D major, BWV 1068. Munich Bach Orchestra, conductor Karl Richter. John Williams plays Bach to complete lute music on guitar. Excellent record, great cover on the Columbia Masterworks label. This is a gatefold record, it opens up, and um, I've always loved Bach being played on the guitar. Uh, here's a, somebody else playing Bach on the guitar, Christopher Parkening. Transcriptions of eight popular compositions by J.S. Bach. Parkening's playing of Bach is so intelligent, sensitive, and adept that one can forget everything but the music. Donald Hanahan in the New York Times. So that's a pretty good endorsement. I have not heard this record, but I have heard Christopher Parkening. And I'm looking forward to listening to it. When I was younger, I, at a certain point, I must have played out the Segovia recordings of the violin sonatas, the cello sonatas transcribed for the guitar. Amazing recordings, so if you have heard it, let me know what you think. We have the four orchestral suites by Bach with the Bath Festival Orchestra with, I suppose it's conducted and played but with Yehudi Menu, and I have listened to this, it's a great record. Oh, this came from Academy Records there on 18th Street in New York. Very nice. Nice cover, too. This is won a Grammy Award from the 60s, 1963. A unique jazz vocal treatment of Johann Sebastian Bach by the creative Swingle Sisters. Now, perhaps one could make a case that this record really belongs in the jazz section of the music. That's possible. Anyway, you've probably heard this. It was a big part of the culture in the 60s. It's a bunch of singers singing Bach with sort of a beboppy type of swing. And it's a fun listen. If you ever get a chance, check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. We've got Bach concertos, concerto in E major for violin, C minor for violin and oboe, New York Philharmonic, concerto in A minor for violin with Isaac Stern, Harold Gomberg on oboe with Leonard Bernstein, a great conductor, a great intellect, and a great composer. Famous Arias of Bach and Handel by Maureen Forrester. I have not listened to this. As I said, I'm just really starting to get into vocal music now. Don't really know who Maureen Forrester is. If anyone knows anything about her, leave a comment. The great Brandenburg Concertos, amazing music by Bach here. Uh, this one's on the Nonsuch label. So this is a gatefold record. This record I have, it's sealed. It's Bach, the complete Brandenburg Concertos with Yehudi Menuhin, the great violinist, conducting the Bath Festival Chamber Orchestra. That'll probably remain sealed for some time. We've got another Brandenburg Concertos LP. 
with a little quote here. If I listen to this set alongside the other available 22 and survived, well, I don't know what that means and survived. Would he have died if he listened? Oh, you mean maybe he's saying that if he could survive listening to it 22 times. I've listened to this music over 22 times. I know practically every note. And yeah, it's a little played out, but it's always a pleasurable listen. I mean, it's just, just such an amazing work of music. So he's saying, and survived, I would be in a position to say that this one was, for me, the best, by the gramophone. I have no idea who the gramophone is. It's probably a uh, music magazine at some point. Payard Chamber Orchestra. And it's got Jean-Pierre Rampal, which is a famous French flute player, and Maurice André, which is the trumpet player. As much as I'm a Bach fan, I really have not listened that much to the cantatas. Where I live in New York City, around Christmas time or the holiday season, there's a Bach fest on WK. Okay, next up we've got um, Bach, the complete flute sonatas, performed by Jean-Pierre Rompal, the great flutist, Robert Veyron Lacroix on harpsichord, Jean Hugo on cello on the Odyssey label, part of Columbia. Uh, I have listened to this, it's a great record. Interesting cover, it's got this sticker on the cover, however, which is a problem. I was afraid to take it off because I didn't want to wreck the cover, but um, since then I found this stuff called Gugan, which um, kind of smells like oranges and you put a few drops on a, on a sticker, you let it soak in, and then it just peels right off. Here again on the archive production label, we've got more cantatas by Bach. I have not listened to this. Uh, conducted by Carl Richter. And unlike that other uh, archive production record that started off this Bach set, um, there are no inspection stickers on this label. So maybe the guy that was uh, inspecting all the records quit after it was just too much work for him, so maybe he couldn't take it anymore. More cantatas on the Nunsuch label. They always had some interesting artwork that went on their records. That's the kind of thing that you don't get when you listen to digital music. Now, at some point, I acquired a lot of records by this singer, Ellie Ameling. They were all in pristine condition and both the sleeves and the media. But they're also really beautiful records. They're beautifully recorded, beautiful music. Uh, this one I have not listened to on the Phillips label. Digital recording at a certain time, and I remember this happening too, um, they would record the uh, recordings digitally and they would press them onto vinyl. So kind of weird that kind of throws a monkey wrench in the whole debate of whether records are better than CDs. I mean you could say how could this record be better than a CD if it was recorded digitally. Anyway I don't I tend not to really be that interested in in that debate. Bach wrote a lot of religious music. He was a Protestant, a Lutheran, and um, this particular work, which I, I have not listened to this record, but I, I have heard the St. Matthew Passion once or twice on the radio. Here's another one of those Ellie Ameling records. I have listened to this, uh, Bach Handel Haydn. I think there's some excerpts from the Messiah on this. Enjoyed it. Eric Satie, ever since I was in college, I liked Eric Satie. Um, we can have a discussion about 20th century music, you know, and where it went and how much of it I actually like. But in the case of Eric Satie, you know, I, I just really like his music. I think it's really lyrical. Um, you've probably heard of the, the uh, Trois Gemnopédies, which are these really just sort of sparse, beautiful piano pieces, just really melodic and lovely. Uh, this drawing on the cover is done by Pablo Picasso. They put three of them here, so it's a little hard to see the drawing. Aldo Ciccolini is the pianist. I happen to also have volume three. Here's that same Picasso drawing just by itself. 
This is another record by Satie, Franz Clidat at the piano. Um, there's probably some similar things as the other two records. Uh, this is on a French Orlane label. I had this, was given to me from someone who went to France and brought it back for me. Handel's Messiah. Handel was a composer who went, a uh, German composer who ended up living in, in England. And he wrote a sacred oratorio called The Messiah, which I've always really loved. I had a video recording of it when I was much younger, and I just was taken by it. It's just beautiful music. I mean, I think that it really stands above much of the rest of what he wrote, although he did write some other great things. John Elliott Gardner is the conductor here with the English Baroque soloists and the Monteverdi Choir. I looked it up after I got it, and this is really pointed to as one of the finest recordings of the Messiah. And it sounds great. It just really sounds great on my turntable. There's three discs in here, and they sound excellent. If you haven't heard the Messiah, I think you're into a special treat, whatever your religious persuasion is. More Handel, this is the famous water music. You're probably familiar with this. You know, you've heard about that. And uh, the whole thing is great. Pierre Boulez is the conductor, by the way. Again, on none such. We've got uh, Antonio Vivaldi, music on the Grand Canal. For some reason, I don't really know this. I mean, it seems like something I should know. Music on the Grand Canal. I don't know if that's just sort of a subtext for the record or the name of the record and these are the pieces here. Or these are all under something called Music on the Grand Canal. I don't know. If you know, drop a comment and let me know. I have not listened to this. I have this Beethoven Bach set that I picked up recently. Records like new. On the Deutsch Gramophone label. Vienna Philharmonic, Karl Bohm, a great interpreter of Beethoven conducting. Nice artwork on the cover. Nice thing to have, I've got to say. All nine symphonies. So there's, I guess, nine discs in here. Otto Klemperer playing Beethoven Symphony Number no. 5. And the Overture King Stefan, which I've never heard, I don't even know what that is but I assume that it's by Beethoven on the Angel label. Next we've got Rimsky Korsakov, Sherazade, Sir Thomas Beecham, definitely sounds English, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra on Angel Records. Looks like some kind of a Chagall on the cover here. Nice looking record. I have not listened to this. I don't know what it sounds like. I'm looking forward to listening to it. If you recommend it, Please tell me your thoughts in the comments. Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. This gentleman was Johann Sebastian Bach's son. Bach came from a very musical family, and he had two well-known musicians as sons. He was at 35, I believe, when Bach died, so he lived with Bach for many years. Uh, and his other son was uh, Johann Christian Bach, who was a lot younger when his father died. Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, I believe, is often overshadowed by his father, but he's a great composer in his own right. Um, I really like his stuff. Well, I'm not that familiar, but I am familiar with this record because I have listened to it. Um, it's Flute and Cello Concerto. So the Flute Concerto is played by Jean-Pierre Rampal, and the Cello Concerto is played by Robert Bex. I liked both of them. I really liked the Cello Concerto. The record sounds very, very good. The cello was really recorded nicely on the Vox label. Let's go on. Bernstein, I like Tchaikovsky. Good composer, I like what he did. Uh, great overtures and tone poems. Capriccio Italien, that's a beautiful piece. Overture March Slav. Romeo and Juliet. Francesca da Rimini. I don't really know what that is. I don't know if that's the name of a performer or if that's the name of a piece. I doubt it's the name of a piece, but could be. If you know, let me know what that is. But anyway, I really like Tchaikovsky and I really like Bernstein. And it's a gatefold album. This is um, Vivaldi Gloria. 
I briefly listened to this um, actually online just to see because I was curious. And uh, it was a very nice piece. I think this is sacred music. Roger Wagner Chorale with the Orchestre de la Société des Concerts du Conservatoire de Paris, conducted by Roger Wagner. Okay, so it looks like it was recorded in France uh, on the Angel Record label. Great guitar player, Julian Bream, English guitar player. This record, An Evening with Julian Bream, has a bunch of different things on it. It's a two record set. I have listened to it. It's very good, well recorded, well played, and a uh, mixture of stuff. Some Spanish stuff, some, some Bach. I believe there's some Mozart on this as well, transcribed for the guitar. Good record. I have not listened to this, The Art of the Spanish Guitar. John Williams is a well-known English guitar player. Albaniz, Villalobos, Granados, Sor, and others. So I am looking forward to listening to this. I have a feeling this is gonna be a very, very good record. London Treasury must mean it's good. More Frederica von Stad, technically beautiful, sung beautifully. All composers I really like. What's not to like about this record? So, you know, I have not listened to this. I got this recently. It's in excellent condition, almost new, uh, on the Deutsch Grammophon label. I was completely unaware of this piece. It turns out that Haydn also, like Handel, went to England, and he also wrote a sacred oratorio called The Creation. Now, what's interesting about the Handel's Messiah was that he wrote it in English. For some reason, even though Haydn was located for many years in England, he wrote this in German, it's called Die Schopfung, conducted by Herbert von Karajan. The creation, and I have not listened to it. If you guys could let me know, if anybody watches this, what you think of this piece. I, I like to sort of know what I'm getting into. I was reading the liner notes on the back of this for this Haydn thing, and it was kind of written for a very strange instrument, and they transcribed it for this instrumentation. Collegium Musicum of Paris, Jean-Pierre Rompal again, under the direction of Roland Duat. I have not listened to this record. I did listen to this. It's a box set. It's, as you can see, it's in pretty bad condition on the sides and the corners. But when I opened up and checked the records, they were mint. Not one scratch, beautiful vinyl. Anyway, I threw all of these records on and they were great. Haydn, I think, gets a little overshadowed by Mozart. I think, but I've always been a fan. When I was younger, I had the quartets. I used to really enjoy those. I think there's the London symphonies that he wrote and the Paris symphonies. I was reading a little bit about these symphonies. He was in Paris at one time. He was, um, Given this commission, he was well paid for it, too, and that's what it said. It was very, very good. Pauken Mess. I guess it's a mass. Mass in Time of War by Joseph Haydn. I think I've seen his name Franz Joseph Haydn and other ones just Joseph Haydn. Choir of St. John's College in Cambridge, Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. George Guest. Argo label. Okay. Looking forward to that. Pick this up. I mean, actually, I got this. I sort of inherited this from somebody. Johannes Brahms box set. Great condition. The Four Symphonies by a great conductor, George Sell, Cleveland Orchestra. Have not listened to it. Will listen to it very soon. Got this, none such label, Claudio Monteverdi, Magnificat for Six Voices. Know very little about this. Don't know who Claudio Monteverdi is, assuming that this is Baroque music, but not really sure. Have to listen to that one day. I did listen to this, this was interesting. It was um, Franz Schubert, was a uh, great pianist and composer who had a very short life, tragically. So he sort of followed shortly after Beethoven. A program of piano music and songs in the intimate style of the historic Schubertiades, held by the inner circle of the composer's friends. So from what I understand, 
Back then, they would get together in these little salons with a piano there. And uh, he'd invite all of his friends, including these lovely ladies, as well as his gentlemen friends. He would play his music and everybody would be enraptured by the music and be lit by candlelight because they didn't have electric lights back then. And they probably had a little sip of drink and I don't know if they had food. They might have smoked some pipes or maybe they didn't. Oh, it's Ellie Ameling on the uh, vocals and Jorg Dimus, the pianist, playing a hammer flugel of 1835. I don't know what a hammer flugel is. I'm assuming it's some kind of a piano. I've heard of a hammer clavier. I've heard of a piano forte. I've heard of a harpsichord. I've heard of a clavichord organ. Never heard of a hammer flugel. If anybody knows what a hammer flugel is, I would really like to know. Winner of the Grand Prix du Disque and Edison's Award. So this record won some awards on the RCA label. Laser or Lazar, I don't really know how to pronounce his name, Berman and Claudio Abado, conductor. Rachmaninoff, Piano Concerto Number no. 3, London Symphony Orchestra on the Columbia Record label. I've got to say that I, I don't know how to put it. Like, it gets a little bit boring for me. And that's when I think that American music gets interesting. Like ragtime, leading into early jazz, leading into jazz, swing, bebop, West Coast jazz, and so on. But Rachmaninoff, so actually I haven't really listened a lot to his stuff. And it seems like the part that I really like is when he's trying to like make a melody as you know his predecessors do. I know that he's considered the last great romantic composer or I've heard that about him. But um, I just, I find a lot of 20th century, and this is like not as bad as others, because I, you know, he's, I think he still has his foot in tonal music, but I just find it to be like fits and starts. I mean, I, I just don't enjoy it that much, but anyway, that's how I feel. I just feel like it gets a little bit boring for me. Have not listened to this. The Third Symphony by Rachmaninoff, I think it's the best. I don't know. Actually, whoever knows more about Rachmaninoff than I do can share some of their thoughts or maybe what I should listen to. Uh, this is a great album cover. Bizet, Carmen and Lalesian Suites. Da, 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 that and other things as well. Good composer. Charles Munch and the New Philharmonia Orchestra. Cool looking record. Radu Lupu, Schumann and Greek Piano Concertos. I have not listened to this. Looking forward to listening to it. I didn't listen to that Carmen record before either. Uh, when I was younger, I had a uh, Radu Lupu playing the fifth piano concerto, the Emperor Concerto of Beethoven. I used to listen to that all the time. And I like Schumann and Greek, so. I'm definitely looking forward to listening to this too. Good orchestra, good conductor. So that's on the list. You know, actually I got this uh, Poulenc record. I picked up this Poulenc record. Sextet for piano and woodwind quintet. I believe he's 20th century. But I really like this. So, you know, if I had said before that I don't like 20th century that much, that's not to say all of it. I happen to find this kind of fun to listen to. But somebody was once telling me that this person, Poulenc, was a member of Le Six, the Six in French, that were not quite like Schoenberg or people like that, or Berg or whatever, which is a real challenge to listen. It's like, you know, they're trying to be atonal, but music means tonality. I mean, that's what music is. It's just like saying, like, books mean words and thoughts. To say, I'm going to make a music that's atonal, it's like, I'm going to write a book that doesn't have words. Yeah, it's kind of a cute idea. For example, John Cage, you know, whatever that piece that he wrote, that you sit at the piano and you just open up the piano and then you sit there for three minutes and 55 seconds or however long it was, I forgot what the exact length of it, which happens to be the name of the piece. You know, then you shut the piano and you leave. Okay, kind of a cute idea, but how many times are you gonna to listen to that? You know, it's like, I wanna make music that's not tonal. You know, that's like, I want to make food that doesn't taste like anything. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, the beautiful part of music, for me anyway, 
is the tonality of it. You know, and jazz I find, you know, with things like the blue note or altered chords or colored chords like flatted thirteenths or, or modulating into different keys or whatever. These are all really interesting things that's going on that doesn't throw tonality out the window. So anyway, that's what I feel about it. But I like this. A Golden Treasury of Concert Favorites, Verdi and Rossini Overtures, I have not listened to this, from the Columbia Record Club. Columbia Record Club, again, this is actually the same record, this is the other side. The Golden Treasury of Concert Favorites, there's two records in this thing. Gilbert and Sullivan Overtures. Gilbert and Sullivan, as I said, I've mentioned before, I am collecting a lot of musical theater, which we'll look at later. But I don't know about Gilbert and Sullivan and uh, something that intrigues me. They were sort of like before Broadway, I think. And they were sort of halfway between like musical theater and opera. At least that's how I understand them. Or they were operettas. I don't really know that much about them, actually. But if anybody has any suggestions of something that you think I would like, please let me know. This record contains some music by a composer called Henry Cowell, an American composer. By the way, I also like Aaron Copland. He's 20th century, and I really love what Leonard Bernstein wrote. But anyway, uh, Henry Cowell, I listened to this, and it's kind of interesting, but the reason that I really like this record is because uh, I happen to have known the violinist. He, he died, actually. But I happen to have known this violinist. It's a good record. It's kind of a good record, too. And he was a great violinist, by the way. George Gershwin plays Rhapsody in Blue. The 1925 piano roll accompanied by Michael Tilson Thomas conducting the Columbia Jazz Band. And here's another example of a 20th century composer. Now, George Gershwin, of course, wrote a lot for the musical theater and Broadway. But turn to the concert hall. I love his stuff, you know, it's, it's great. It's great music. But he brought in a lot of jazz influence, I think had something to do with it. Brought, brought some jazz idioms in there. Love this stuff. I think basically what they did back then, since they didn't really have such great recording equipment, is that they would sit down and they would play and then it would be recorded on a piano roll. So you can see the punched, you know, holes in this piano roll, which is capturing his performance. And then I guess they took the piano roll and re-recorded it much later with Michael Tilson Thomas conducting the Columbia Jazz Band. So this has a lot of promise for me. I'm really looking forward to listening to this. I have heard American in Paris and Rhapsody in Blue before. I just haven't heard this record played by George Gershwin himself on piano. Interesting. Here's some more Gershwin. I have listened to this and it does sound very good. Symphony of London Orchestra. Big fan of George Gershwin. And he's from New York, my hometown. Another vocal record which I picked up recently, uh, Marilyn Horn in operatic areas from all these people. Have not listened to it, will listen to it. Montserrat Caballé. Uh, I have not heard this record. I watched a video by her and was very impressed with her on stage with an orchestra. Uh, found out later that she was the opera singer that duetted with uh, Freddie Mercury from Queen. Just kind of an interesting bit of trivia there. Looking forward to listening to this. Frederica von Stad, National Art Center Orchestra, Italian Opera Arias. This one I have listened to as well, and I enjoyed it. Good quality of work. Debussy. Have not listened a lot to Debussy, but I did listen to this. Once again, this is kind of transitioning into the 20th century, into a lot of things that I find kind of dull. I think it had its moments. Some people like it. Baroque music for recorders. I have not listened to this, but uh, kind of getting a kick. I used to play the recorder when I was a, a kid. I had one lying around the house one day outside of New York for a few weeks and I started playing it. I was kind of got into playing it for a while and then it's kind of funny to see that this was actually a very serious instrument and it is, it is a serious instrument, especially in Baroque music and there's whole concertos written for it and stuff like that. So I never got that good at it, but it's a nice instrument. It doesn't have the sonority of a flute, let's say, 
but um, you know, it was a popular instrument in its time. So I found this record one day, digging through some stacks. I believe she was a Russian Jewish singer. It's a bit of a historical recording. On the liner notes, I believe it was Leonard Bernstein who really cited her, her as a great singer. Um, I have not listened to it. I've listened to one of her things on YouTube. So there you have it, Columbia Odyssey. So Stravinsky's greatest hits. You know, it's just that I find that like, um, it's really jazz for me in this era, where, where my interest lies. Oh, this should be with the Vivaldi's. Dixit, don't really know what this is about. It's an old one though. Here's another Ellie Amelie. Kind of should take should have taken off that plastic on the cover. But when I get a record and it sort of has this sort of like plastic on it, I never really know, should I leave it on there? Will it help to protect the record and keep it looking great? Should I take it off since I'm gonna put a plastic sleeve over it anyway? What do you guys think? What do you do with your records? Vinyl community guys out there. You take the plastic off or leave the plastic on? Let me know what you think. The oboe. Well, I love the sound of the oboe. I think it's a great instrument. Hans Holliger, I think, is one of the greatest oboe players that ever lived, um, or at least in the modern era. Bamberg Symphony Orchestra, conductor Peter Mag. Deutsch gramophone. Nice cover, too. Duets from French opera, Mady Mespli and Nikolai Geda. Bunch of stuff on this, Paris Opera Orchestra. This probably is the Opera Hall in Paris. Pierre Dervaux conducting Angel Label. French Opera Areas, Frederica von Stad, Berlioz, Gounod, Massenet, Meyerbeer, Offenbach, Thomas. I think I will like this record because I like all these composers. John Pritchard and the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Here's Ellie Ameling again. Foray, I do like Foray. I mean, I don't know too much of his thing, but I heard something by him the other day that I really liked. La Bonne Chanson, Debussy. We'll see how that sounds. Dalton Baldwin on the piano. Oh, Baldwin Piano. I wonder if he uh, has a Baldwin Piano. CBS Masterworks. Here's a picture of Ellie Emling looking rather sprightly and kind of looks like she's doing karate there, actually, if you look at it, but looking very appealing in her robes. Ellie Emling, Think On Me, personal favorites, Melody Préféré, German, I'm not gonna even try, Dalton Baldwin, or Dalton Baldwin again on the piano. Have not listened to it, but will. Beverly Sills. Bellini and Donizetti heroines. This should be good. I've not listened to this. Art of the Prima Donna box set, Joan Sutherland, London label. Joan Sutherland as Elvira in I Puritani. This should be interesting. I think that's the last one, but let me just make sure. Oh no, there's more, okay. Camille Sanson, I do really like his work too. Um, 19th century French composer. Uh, I have the organ concerto, which I've listened to a bunch of times, and that's a nice piece as well. The violin concerto, introduction and rondo capriccio, capriccioso. Opus 28, Havanese, Pierre Amoyal, violin, New Philharmonia Orchestra, Vernon Handley, conductor. Have to give that a spin one of these days. Another one of these Ellie Ameling records, uh, Rudolf Jansen piano. I wonder what happened to Dalton Baldwin. Maybe he couldn't make it that day. Giving us a nice smile there, Phillips digital classic. Here's something I picked up. I had no idea what was on it, but I kind of like the cover. And I don't even know where it's from. It's like director Gerard Mortier. Record Production National Opera, maybe it's opera. KMS, TRM, Brussels. Oh, Schumann, Ebert, and Poulenc, and Absil. Could be interesting. 
If you guys know anything about it, let me know or if you've heard it. I picked this up. This is sort of an older thing on the Decca label, who were one of the first uh, labels really to do classical music seriously. Josquin de Prez, Misa, Pang, Lengua, Motets, and instrumental pieces. New York Pro Musica Motet Choir and Wind Ensemble, Noah Greenberg conductor. And here are the solos. So judging by the picture, it looks like very early music, maybe pre-Baroque. Nice record cover. This is an interesting record. Walt Disney's Fantasia, Leopold Stokowski with the Philharmonic Orchestra. This is a beautiful thing. It opens up like a gatefold. It's got pictures from the movie in there. And then it's got all the music from Fantasia. So if you're interested in knowing what's on this record, you could just look it up, look up at the movie, see what was in the movie. I have a box set here. Jean-Pierre Rampal, the virtuoso flute. Solos with orchestra. And there's Jean-Pierre Rampal, which is an amazing flute player on a French label. Have not listened to this. Looking forward to listening to this. Berlioz, Romeo and Juliet. I have not listened to this. I do like Berlioz. I have a feeling this is going to be very, very good. Boston Symphony Orchestra, Charles Munch, Munch conducting. An operatic box set. I saw this opera and I really liked it. I have not listened to this box set, so I think I would want to sit down with the libretto and follow the whole thing. George Salty conducting. Recorded in Rome. That's interesting. RCA Victor. Great Sopranos of Our Time. Victoria de Los Angeles. Wonder if she's from Los Angeles. Maria Callas. Regine Crespin. Birgit Nielsen. Elizabeth Schwartzkopf. Joan Sutherland. Great Sopranos of Our, of our Time on Angel. I and this is the last one as far as classical vinyl is concerned. Thank you for watching this video and allowing me to express some of my opinions about these records, thoughts about music in general. I do this for record collectors, really for music lovers, but also for record collectors and people who like to look at records and to talk about them. Next, we're going to move on to classical CDs, and I've got a lot of those. Uh, and I'll sort of tell you where I got them from and how I acquired them, and that will be in the next video. So thanks for watching, and um, take care of yourself. Bye.